Ukraine's president has called an emergency meeting after a major dam was blown up. The Novokakova Dam sits on the Dnipro River in the Kherson region, which Russia controls. Ukraine's military blames Russia, but Moscow-appointed officials say it was destroyed by shelling. Evacuations of surrounding areas are now underway. The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant further down the river is said to be in no danger. Well, Charles Stratford joins us live now from the Ukrainian capital. Uh, Charles, so what more can you tell us about this dam being breached? Well, of huge significance, as you can imagine, Darren, this dam. Um, analysts have long pointed at it as being a potential target to be blown up by both sides, in fact, because uh, the Ukrainians could well be um, interested in, in seeing this dam blown up because it is so important in terms of supplying water and irrigation to Russian-occupied Crimea. And, of course, the Russians would see it as potentially being a weapon as a means of making it more difficult for Ukrainian forces to cross the Dnieper River into uh, Russian-occupied Crimea in any kind of ground offensive. Um, the latest we're hearing, certainly from the Ukrainian government, we understand that President Zelensky is going to be holding an emergency meeting with the state, um, the National Security uh, Council. We're also hearing from uh, the Ukrainians that they believe that um, critical water levels will reach, um, will reach a critical point around five hours from now. And we also know that there are ongoing evacuations um, from some of the settlements that are going to be affected. Certainly, um, TASS, the Russian news agency, are saying that there are around 80 settlements that could be affected and there are evacuations going on from there, we understand. But that's on their side of the river, that's on the southern side. There are a whole host of other settlements on the north as well. Of course, this area has seen some pretty heavy fighting, less so in recent months since the Ukrainian forces pushed the Russian forces out of Kherson. But we still know that there are a lot of people that live in this area. We also know that um, it has been reported and not denied by the Ukrainian military that um, there have been sort of special forces. It's understood Ukrainian special forces, certainly Ukrainian troops, were about a month ago reported to have crossed that area of the river further south from the dam and had taken up positions um, south of the river. So if indeed this was the Russians, and that's what the Ukrainians are saying, then this is, one can only imagine, a bid to wipe that area out and, as I say, make it far more difficult for Ukrainian forces to push further forward. Okay. I mean, this is a large body of water, and that's, that's, that's an understatement. I mean, this dam is three metres high, 3.2 kilometres long, supplies hydroelectric power to the whole region. So it is of huge significance and of great concern, obviously, as you can imagine, for the civilians still living in that area. Yeah, uh, Charlie, a claim and counterclaim as well over Ukraine's offensives in Donetsk. What else has been happening? Yes, Darren, as you say, um, we've heard over the last sort of 48 hours or so uh, an intensification of fighting in various locations around uh, Donetsk, uh, the Donetsk region and further south of that. Um, the, the Ukrainians claiming that they have made inroads to the south of the, uh, the, the, the Russian captured town of Bakhmut that was taken control of by the Russian forces after months and months of fighting um, last month. Now the Ukrainians saying that they have recaptured some areas to the south of that. We're also hearing reports of ongoing fighting um, in, in areas of uh, southern Donetsk region. The Russians are saying that they repelled an attack by Ukrainian forces yesterday. We understand that this fighting is ongoing. We've been looking at some of these developments and whether this actually repre represents finally the, uh, the beginnings of this long-awaited Ukrainian counteroffensive. And this is our report. The Russian army says this video shows Ukrainian military vehicles being forced to withdraw after a failed attempt to push into Russian-occupied territory in the southern Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine. On June the 4th, the enemy launched an unsuccessful attempt at a large-scale offensive in the South Donetsk direction. Six mechanised and two tank battalions of the enemy were activated. Their goal was to break through our defences in the most vulnerable, in their opinion, sectors of the front. The enemy did not achieve its tasks. It had no successes. 
The statement, which is difficult to independently verify, comes a few days after Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, said his armed forces were now ready for a long-awaited Ukrainian counter-offensive. His foreign minister implied the same. We received enough weapons to begin the counter-offensive, but I will say uh, again, my answer is, is always the same to this. I will say that we received enough of weapons after we win. Because until we haven't won, there, is, there will be never enough of weapons. The Ukrainian military says this video shows Russian positions coming under heavy fire to the south of the town of Bakhmut, which Russia claimed full control of last month. Hours later, the leader of the Russian mercenary group Wagner released an audio message saying Ukrainian forces were making small gains in the village of Berkivka, north of the town. He yet again blamed Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Chief of General Staff Valery Gerasimov. Part of Berkivka has already been lost. The troops are quietly running away. What a disgrace. Shoigu, Gerasimov, I urge you, go to the front line. Pick up a gun and make the troops stand up and move forward. Come on, you can do it. And if not, you will die heroes. The Ukrainian military in recent days has launched what can be described as a campaign of silence. It released this video aimed at the public, the media and Ukrainian soldiers appealing for silence on the counteroffensive in order to preserve some element of surprise. Amid the claim and counterclaims, there is increasing evidence of an intensification of fighting at various locations along the front line. Whether this represents the beginning of the long-awaited Ukrainian counteroffensive and efforts by Ukrainian forces to find weak spots in Russian defence, or indeed these are small probing attacks ahead of a larger full-scale operation, well, that will become clear in the coming days. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Kyiv.